This is Christianity, the lawless. This is what happens because, quote, Christians in name only believe that, quote, the laws are done away with, end quote. You know what, this camera, when you give me my money, 15 minutes, 125. You know the drill. How many times a week we do that, Joe? This time? This time, really? You think you're going to... No, I'm sorry. Your wife going to see this. Your wife is going to see this. Pay me my money or get a divorce. Which one is going to be? Give me off that Which shit. one is it going to be? Give me off that damn She's going to know. Give me off the Three, four shit. times a week he here, y'all. Facebook, he's here meeting with me in this room. Yeah. No, I'm not getting you off of nothing. Everybody gonna know about you. Run me my money. I ain't got time for this. You know my money is valuable. I'm sorry. You know my time is my money. And I, I I'll explain my time with you. I gave you 200 last time. And you got $200 worth of pleasure the last time, too. Let me pay you when I get home. No, no. You ain't gave me nothing extra. You got extras. I'm sorry. No, absolutely not. I came on to be transparent, and as simple as this, I messed up. Um, this has been a really, really hard few days, but the struggle didn't just begin. You know, the struggle has been a struggle, and um, the conviction has been great. Um, and many times people don't know how to accept the struggle of a leader or the struggle of the pastor you know, and they take the, the human and the man out of the pastor, out of the bishop, out of the apostle, out of the prophet. I didn't address what should have been addressed in my life, you know, and um, you all seen it. I don't have to recap it. You know, you seen the video, you know, but other people will paint a picture of you to be the worst person in the world because of a failure. Um. I want to take my responsibility. That's my public statement. I want to take my responsibility and I want to repent for God. I want to take off my title and take off my hat and take off all the articulations of, of my duties. And I want to repent to the people who God has entrusted in my hands and um and i want to repent to my leaders my pastor my bishop my first lady all of the collegiate presbyters board of presbyters and those who have you know signature my credentials and trusted me with the call I want to repent to you. I want to apologize and take responsibility. And um, great measures. I was just wishing hope that this live would touch somebody else who struggles behind the cross, who struggles behind the title, who who struggles, you know, you can be gifted and people that drive off your gift. You can, you know, you can make it happen. You can make it go over and people will drive off what goes over. You walk away, you walk away with the gratitude and the satis satisfaction that you fulfilled your purpose in that service. You fulfilled your purpose in that, um, that conference, you fulfilled your purpose, um, your call of duty in that particular thing, and you leave with your struggles. You fall into your divers of temptation and you get up with conviction and you don't know how to address, I need a change in my struggle. So I want to say, to everybody to forgive me, to the world. 
I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to leave it here um, with much rebuke from my pastor, with much reprove from my pastor, and I know with much restoration from my pastor. Um, I take it. I take ownership. I take ownership. Leviticus 20, chapter 13. If a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So we're going to see what the Most High does to these people that are out here doing this activity. There are a number of things that could happen from disease up through death. And just because the uh, pastors don't understand that this whole alphabet behavior and habits are in the New Testament, we're going to take a read of Romans chapter 1, verses 24 to 27. Wherefore, the Most High also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, of their own minds, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Verse 25 who changed the truth of the Most High into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Continue on to Romans chapter 1, verse 26. For this cause the Most High gave them up unto vile affections, unto disgraceful and shameful affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. That is talking about women with women. Verse 27. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts one towards another. Men with men working that which is unseemly, that which is shameful and disgusting, and receiving in themselves that recompense, that reward of their error, which was meat, which was right and proper. Now to a very disturbing story. A local pastor is in jail accused of sexually assaulting a family member several hundred times. And court documents say it happened in parking lots in two local churches. ABC 13's Giovanni Ligi is live from the Harris County Jail tonight, breaking down everything we know. Giovanni? Well, court documents showing the sexual assault started when this little girl was just seven years old. It lasted for almost a decade, and at one point, he even got her pregnant. 39-year-old Robert Carter is the man police said sexually assaulted his own family member. Documents showing this happened over the span of a decade at least 600 times. Now he's in jail for continuous sexual abuse of a child. Court documents showing the victim told police the assault would happen almost nightly. And when she turned 16, the documents showing he got her pregnant. The documents showing she had the baby in a closet, and he then took it to a nearby fire station. Some of the details in these documents are too graphic to show. Investigators accusing Carter of doing this at multiple locations. It started in 2008 when the child was only seven years old. He would offer to give her candy in exchange for sexual acts. Investigators saying he would do this when other family members were sleeping, telling the child if she told anyone, nobody would believe her. The victim telling investigators it would happen at the church he worked at in Sunnyside, in the back of this Summerwood H-E-B parking lot before he would take her to school, and when she was older, at another church nearby where she refused. The documents showing that he told her if she didn't do what he asked, he would make her life a living hell. And now, more than a decade after this assault started, Carter is here in jail, held on a $100,000 bond, due back in court tomorrow. A local pastor now facing continuous sexual assault of a child. According to official documents, Robert L. Carter repeatedly raped a young family member, even impregnating her. Tonight, her father is speaking only to our Devin Clark, who is live outside of HPD headquarters with further details. Devin. I gotta tell you, this 
The warrant states that the rapes started when this girl was just seven years old and lasted well into her late teens, happening at least 600 times with a felony charge now filed. The alleged victim's father is speaking out, but we do want to warn you, what you're about to hear may be extremely disturbing. She had been around this monster since she was about six, I mean, six years old. This man asked not to be identified as to protect his daughter's identity. That isn't stopping him from speaking out about this man, 39-year-old Robert L. Carter, who he says was a family member to his daughter. So he's always been big to her, you know, and I had realized that she'd been fearful. The man whose profile on the Black Preachers Network website has him listed as a bishop and senior pastor is now an accused rapist. I don't understand you know, how you can carry yourself, walk around preaching the word and living, you know, a lie. According to Carter's arrest warrant filed last month, the abuse began back in 2008 when the victim was seven years old. It states he would go in her room and make her perform a sex act on him on a nightly basis. How? Like, how could you even get aroused? Like, it doesn't make any sense. The warrant states the abuse got worse over the years and that it would happen in multiple locations, including their home when everyone was asleep, Carter's grandmother's home, and behind an HEB in the parking lot before dropping the victim off at school. The document also states that Carter would bring the victim here to the Greater Bible Way Church in Sunnyside where he had an office and rape her. She's had uh, an episode where she ended up in the hospital, you know, for, a, for psychiatric reasons. The warrant states she secretly had Carter's baby. What if she would have died that night? She has a baby in the closet by herself. And he came and got the baby and took the baby to a fire station and dropped the baby off. With many questions, we went to Carter's address listed on the warrant. But no one seemed to be home, so we called him. The person you are calling is not available. Record your message at the tone. No answer. While the warrant has been filed, we understand that Carter has not been taken into custody at this time. As for the baby mentioned in the story, the father you heard from says his daughter is in the process of trying to get the child back. Reporting live outside of HBD headquarters tonight, Devin Clark, KPRC 2 News. Now, for this case, dealing with this pastor that uh, repeatedly raped this young girl, we have to connect some scriptures together because sexual assault against children is not in the scriptures, but we can piece some things together to, to understand that this is not something that the Most High approves of. Leviticus 19, verse 17, 18. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart and thy mind. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke, that is correct, thy neighbor and shalt not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. So you see here that thy brother is thy neighbor and is the children of thy people. This is, this is what it is. Everybody's not your neighbor. Everybody's not your brother. And obviously everybody's not the children of thy people. So these three things are all the same in relation to our people. So let's get into it. Because this is where we connect the scriptures to see that what this man did was an abomination. Exodus chapter 20, verse 17. Thou shalt not covet, that means desire, thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet or desire thy neighbor's wife nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, that's a male servant and a female servant, nor his ox, meaning talking about his property, nor his ass, another piece of property, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. You see that? Nor anything, meaning their children. Makes complete sense. You're not to want, not to covet after, desire after anything that is thy neighbor's. Now, this is where we see a uh, force of the grape kind, okay? Deuteronomy 22, 25. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lie with her shall die. You see, you have to connect the scriptures to find out what the judgment is. 
for a particular sin. In this case, a man who forces himself upon a woman is to be put to death. All praises to the Most High Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai.